Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Ashton and we're uh, doing our first uh, web lecture or video lecture uh, for the class. And welcome to the class everybody. And so what I'd like to do is uh, introduce myself, talk a little bit about uh, taking online courses, and uh, introduce this course to you in terms of the specifics of the course and also in terms of uh, an introduction to IO psychology. Okay, so this is a video lecture. Should you take notes during the lecture? Well, hopefully you take notes during a normal lecture. And like in a normal lecture, on the PowerPoint slides or on the board, I will have some general notes, but also for each slide I will be adding more and saying more things which you should probably get down in your notes. So it's not just an issue of having a copy of the slides, you need also to take notes. And uh, introduction to me, I got my PhD in social psychology in 1991 uh, and uh, in graduate school I studied the fundamental attribution error, uh, the stigma of mental illness and gender and social support. Uh, I've taught at Wittenberg University and Wright State University and St. Olaf College, uh, you know, and since 2003 I've been here at York and I'm teaching social psych and uh, research methods and the business courses, IO psych, uh, consumer behavior, and organizational behavior. Uh, current research that I'm doing, uh, you know, I'm actually uh, could update this because as of I think uh, September the 9th uh, my, the book with my current uh, research in it what would Hermes do a Jungian perspective on the trickster and business ethics uh, that's going to be published so uh, that's no longer just something I'm doing but it'll be pu published and I'll be on to something else uh, I should publish or hope to publish uh, you know, my research on fandoms and trust in the government sometime this year. And since uh, my research on, I, let me get a pointer. Is this a pointer? Where are the pointers? No, I don't want that. How do I undo that? Ah, pointer. And, uh, so now that uh, this uh, chapter is published, I'll probably be moving on to something on defensive attributions. Uh, and in fact, I've already started designing that next study. Hopefully I'll be running it uh, this fall. Uh, more about me, uh, I have a management background. I was the uh, you know, associate director of a community uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, a mental health center and the executive director of a uh, leadership training organization. And I have a great deal of background in leadership and really that's my expertise in IO psychology, the organizational and leadership sides. And so let's talk about taking an online class. Have you taken a 100% online class before? Those are different than hybrid courses. Uh, have you taken at least a hybrid class before? Uh, what did you think about the Blackboard assignments in in-person classes? Were they easy to do? Uh, were they fun? Were they interesting? And also, do you work well by yourself? And, whoops, I got lost. Sorry, folks. There we go. If you answered no to any of the above questions, this may be a difficult class for you, and I'm not encouraging you to drop, but I am uh, suggesting or encouraging you to be careful and to make sure that you allot time to study and study carefully to this, uh, this subject. So, uh, you know, a lot of students are taking online classes, and I know why students are taking them, because they think that they're easier, and I really disagree with that. A good online class is should be involving and a student should be prepared to do as much work as they do in a, a normal class. In a normal class you're in class three hours a week 
and it's expected that you study and do outside assignments for at least another three to six hours per week. So for this online course, I'm expecting that you're going to be uh, devoting about nine hours a week to it. Uh, taking an online class, you need a computer that works well. You need a place to study uh, and a place to work on your computer that's uh, you know kind of uh, isolated. And you need to have study skills. Uh, you're going to work on computer in place. That's your job. The first week of the class, we're going to work on study skills. And so this course is an introduction to industrial organizational psychology. And it's a survey of the field. So we're going to overview the entire field of IO psychology. And I would like to emphasize basic skills and knowledge in a couple important areas. One important area is fair employment. Uh, that is EEOC, uh, you know, that uh, the hiring, the evaluation, the promotion, the firing of people is done fairly in respect to the protected classes. Uh, knowing that part of the law and the regulations governing it is very important to IO psychologists. And since a lot of you people are business major majors, you just need to know that also. So uh, uh, we're going to emphasize that. Testing, uh, that is understanding employment tests, understanding uh, the ways that you evaluate and assess uh, performance on the job, that's fairly technical and we're going to focus on that also. And finally, selection, uh, that is choosing people for the jo right job. And we're going to look at job interviews, we're going to look at resumes, and we're going to focus on you learning about the better ways to do resumes and the better ways to do job interviews. So uh, that's it for the course. Of course, it's a survey of the field, so that's a lot. Uh, and you may recognize, if you're a business student especially, that the topics are similar to business courses. But there's an experimental emphasis, because this is psychology, and psychology is an experimental science. And so we do have that scientific uh, experimental uh, focus or tone to the course. The way this will work out is that we'll have uh, quizzes, uh, er, you know, more or less every week, uh, at least one, usually just one, but sometimes uh, one and a half or something like that. Uh, we'll have weekly discussion uh, board participation assignments. Usually there'll be one to two discussion assignments running. And I do that. I have a couple running at the same time so that we don't have to finish all in one week, which students uh, find that very difficult, that timetable. Uh, we'll have a midterm exam and then a final exam. Grading. Uh, quizzes 25% weekly discussion board 25%. So your weekly day-to-day -day work is 50% of your class grade. And I've just realized those numbers are off somehow. Uh, I think I'll guess I'll make the uh, final exam 30% and then it'll work. Uh, so I'll be changing the uh, syllabus, <laughs> looks like. Uh, so the, uh, 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 you know, so half of your grade is based on the weekly work, so it's important to keep up with the class. Uh, you know, in a uh, online course, you know, we don't meet in person, so therefore, uh, what that means is uh, you have to be there and you have to, you know, devote yourself to the class on a daily basis. And uh, you know, in an online course, you know, the fact that we're online and you have to show up to class, you know, for two and a half hours a week that really helps you uh, and not having that requirement of actually being present in class at a certain time that's a obstacle for a lot of students to overcome but you have to overcome it if you want to take an online course and then like I said this will probably be 30 percent something like that so one of the first things you should do is go over to your syllabus uh, on Blackboard uh, there is a, on the nav bar on the left hand side of the page of uh, Blackboard is a, a folder called Syllabus. And check out the syllabus. Uh, read it carefully. 
uh, and uh, so uh, you know do that. I have online office hours. Uh, what that is is essentially a discussion board where you can ask questions. So if you have a question, go and read what the other questions were and my answers to it. That might help you. Uh, and if you don't see your question asked already, ask it and I'll answer it. And then you can move on to week number one, uh, which is working online. That is under assignments, the assignments folder. Uh, you can go to weekly assignments and uh, you know working online which is our first set of assignments and uh, here's uh, the blackboard page here's the nav bar or some of the nav bar and if you click syllabus schedule and syllabus you'll go to this page and you'll get to see uh, the textbook and this link will take you to the Academos uh, site for our textbook here's the syllabus and it has the schedule and uh, then you can go and take a look at dashboard uh, the dashboard is a landing page for the course and uh, that's important because I set up all the due dates for assignments in the calendar and that automatically shows up in the dashboard so if you're wondering what you have to do today uh, just take a look at the dashboard or go and look at the calendar and you'll see exactly what's due when and always go to assignments and then weekly assignments uh, to look for uh, you know explanations and instructions for the assignments of that week that's my new cat Luna I had her for two and a half years isn't she a cutie okay and then finally uh, let me give you an introduction to the topic and You'll notice that this is not my slides. These are from the Society for Industrial and Organizational Psychology, PSYOP, the professional organization for IO psychologists. And this is the general introduction that they suggest for undergraduate courses. And I'm using that to tip you off to PSYOP, a very uh, useful uh, organization and website, especially for undergraduates who are interested in careers in psych uh, IO psychology but also to show you that this course aligns very well with uh, what uh, you know, uh, is done nationally. So first off, what is IO psychology? It's the application of psychological principles to the workplace. Anywhere people work, that is IO psychology. When we apply psychology to people doing work, that's IO psychology. And a lot of people say psychology is to help people and so is IO psychology. IO psychology helps people do their jobs. Uh, it helps by uh, helping to treat employ, uh, you know, employers fairly, by you know, employees fairly by employers. It helps uh, you know, making jobs more interesting and satisfying uh, for the workers themselves and it helps workers become more productive. First off, treating uh, employees more fairly. Uh, it's all about treating people from diverse backgrounds with the, you know, and by diverse backgrounds, I'm not talking about just race or gender, but I'm talking about educational background and skill set background. Everything that people bring to the job site, uh, you know, it's different for different people. And in one way or another, IO psychologists are going to have to help the employers, uh, you know, uh, take those people with different backgrounds and do something about it. And so one way we do, uh, we train, uh, uh, we uh, treat people fairly, is that we select people for jobs, and we IO psychologists basically organize the process of you know hiring people, of finding people, and also selecting people. We uh, organize the process of doing employment tests and doing interviews and going through resumes and going through applications. We provide training for people who may have something from their background that is lacking. Uh, we work to uh, you know structure re uh, you know reward promotions and raises uh, to do that fairly. And we also work by addressing harassment at work. And then finally what we do is we assess performance accurately. That is, when you're going to be assessed on the job, you want it 
you want to know that you're being assessed in a fair way and a way that's accurate, that isn't full of error. And that's what IO psychologists do. IO psychologists help people by making jobs more interesting and satisfying. Uh, that is, you're devoting about eight hours of your life every day to a job. And so uh, it is a lot of your life. And so it's very important for people uh, to really get something back besides a paycheck. And so we help design jobs that people will find rewarding, uh, but also safe and uh, efficient and pleasant work areas. And that's the human factors part of IO psychology. We also uh, discover ways to motivate employees to perform better and to work better and reach their potential. And we also create teams or groups of people that work well together. The one thing I would change, not changing much, is that I tend to prefer not to talk about team because that's a sports related word. And you basically kick up some very interesting uh, you know, psychodynamics when you use team metaphors. Uh, that is, a lot of men, uh, you know, uh, have played sports, and a lot of them have felt like they haven't achieved as much as they could, so they have negative issues about that. A lot of women feel cut out from sports, and they have negative issues about that. So I generally tend to like to avoid uh, sports-related metaphors. But one thing that IO psychologists do is that we create t uh, groups that work well together. We take these diverse backgrounds that people have and these diverse perspectives and we build them together in order to create groups that are greater than the sum of their parts. And then finally, we help people uh, to be more productive. Uh, we design work patterns that enhance efficiency. Uh, so, for example, flex time uh, allows people to uh, meet the needs that they have outside of the workplace, uh, but also meet the needs of the workplace uh, efficient, uh, efficiently. Uh, we provide skill and training and development for people. And in fact, a lot of the IO psychologists that I know and a lot that, I've, that have gone through this class are in training and development. Uh, for example, uh, you know, one uh, student who was in this class about 12 years ago, uh, I believe out yeah, 12 years ago, uh, he was a business major. And, and after taking the class, he said he wanted to be an IO psychologist. So we talked about it and I helped him. And he went to uh, uh, graduate school, got his master's degree in IO psych. And I just got an email from him recently and he's down in Atlanta doing skill training and development. So a lot of IO psychologists I know are in that. Uh, you know, help uh, people meet the challenges of competition uh, and help move past uh, downsizing. That, you'll notice that eh, 1998, this is kind of old. And so back in 1998, downsizing was a big issue. And can I do this? No, I can't. Too bad. You try writing with your mouse. G-L-O. That's supposed to say globalization. And uh, I think one of the ways that IO psychologists now in 2019 are helping people be productive is by dealing with issues of globalization and also diversity. And in this case, I'm using terms such as diversity, uh, specifically in terms of uh, protected classes and categories similar to protected classes. That is race, gender, uh, gender role, gender identity, uh, and sexual preference. These are becoming more and more important issues on the job. Uh, 
you know, uh, as you may know from reading the news, uh, there's a lot of issues in terms of, uh, you know, whether or not we're going to be accepting gay people or trans people uh, in the workplace. Uh, there have been a lot of positive steps forward in terms of accepting, uh, you know, uh, uh, gay people and trans people and others, LGBT plus uh, people in the workplace. However, in the last two and a half years, uh, there's been some backsliding and some actual movement backwards. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, the workplace is where a lot of these fights or a lot of this conflict is showing up. And so one of the things that we'll need to pay attention to is uh, this issue of diversity. And uh, diversity, especially about LGBTQ plus uh, people. So these are the ways that IO psychologists benefit people and make them more productive at work. And so those three ways, helping employees, employers treat employees fairly, making uh, the jobs more interesting and satisfying, and helping workers uh, be more productive. These are the three ways that IO psychologists help people do their job. And that kind of looks like me, not really. Uh, but that's it for today's lecture. Uh, I'll see you online. Bye-bye.